Secretary. And Coral, I'm delighted to have a brief opportunity to speak on, on this important motion brought forward by my colleagues, uh, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan, Deputy Clare Daly, and the other members of the um, Independence for Change Technical Group. And I want to commend my colleagues uh, on, on this. And while there has been some tiny progress uh, uh, can in animal welfare since the uh, 2013 Act, uh, there are still increasing reports of, of animal cruelty, loopholes in regulation, and insufficient monitoring uh, and enforcement uh, uh, across the spectrum of animal care. Uh, and as uh, Deputy O'Sullivan said, uh, Minister, I think you told the House um, la uh, this time last year that there had only been 13 successful prosecutions under, under the 2013 Animal Health and Welfare Act in one year, and that there were 38 prosecution uh, files being processed at that time. They, these numbers seem incredibly low. Given the many millions of animals reared each year, I think right now we have something about 11 and a half, 12 million uh, basic you know, domestic farm uh, animals in the Republic alone. Um, and uh, as you know, Ken, on the 21st of March this year, uh, I introduced uh, the uh, Welfare of Greyhounds Amendment Bill 2017. I asked you about it earlier on, Minister whether or not you could incorporate this bill into uh, the uh, bill on the greyhound industry. And I found your reply uh, a few hours ago a bit disappointing, uh, because as you know, all we were seeking to try and do in the bill uh, was to control the export of greyhounds and to provide for uh, publication of the whitelist uh, to which the export of uh, greyhounds under licences uh, would be per permissible, and to make it an offence to export a greyhound uh, to a country that's not included uh, in the uh, whitelist. Um, and uh, over recent years, of course, uh, the welfare of, of uh, our dogs being exported um, and uh, racing and, and retired greyhounds, um, it's uh, obviously become a major campaign issue. Uh, we know that uh, Irish greyhounds were, were exported to Macau, China, to race in the famous Yat Yuen uh, Cannon Drone, and, and obviously the public is very upset about reports of this, um, and that at the end of the day, uh, dogs are raced to death and, and then ended up uh, somewhere in the, the uh, food chain. Um, and uh, the response, I think, from, the Irish, from our government and the Greyhound Board regarding the export of our Irish dogs to countries with appalling or no uh, animal welfare uh, standards whatsoever. It has so far been totally useless, Minister. Um, so while the white list that we proposed in the Welfare of Greyhounds Amendment Bill 2017 it can't provide uh, for the, for, uh, at the moment for the selling on from other jurisdictions, it does give Ireland the opportunity to be a leader in this area. I did listen very carefully, of course, Minister, to uh, campaigners uh, who basically uh, want the uh, export of greyhounds beyond these islands. Uh, stop completely. Uh, I also welcome, uh, welcome uh, contacts with uh, MEP Nessa Childers um, uh, to discuss the work of the European Parliament Animal Welfare um, uh, Intergroup this autumn and, and the uh, possibility that the European Parliament obviously uh, can establish centres across the uh, current 28 uh, European countries. Um, the uh, Greyhound Rescue Association of course uh, claims that there are around 38 grey greyhounds being put down monthly and traceability um, issues remain also uh, because greyhounds are not microchipped for from birth, and the GRA, of course, claimed that um, up to 10,000 uh, of our wonderful Irish greyhounds could be unaccounted for each year. And of course, earlier in the year, as I mentioned this afternoon, Minister uh, broadcaster Sharon Viola on, on prime time, uh, they, they aired their famous programme "Gone to the Dogs," which put the a spotlight on doping uh, and the poor regulation in, generally in the greyhound industry in Ireland. Um, and uh, obviously, this is an area you said earlier on uh, that you had concerns about, and, and uh, perhaps in your response, uh, you, you might come back and fuller way uh, and to talk about that. And of course, animal welfare extends not only to our greyhounds but to all our animals. And in keeping with the, the theme uh, of racing animals uh, for profit, I, I also want to um, echo the comments of Deputy O'Sullivan in regard of uh, coursing hares. Uh, just last week, I asked the Minister for Culture, Heritage and the Gale for uh, Ms. Heather Humphreys, Deputy Heather Humphreys, to report on the monitoring of coursing trials around the country, whether breaches of trial rules have taken place in the last number of years and what the repercussions for the breach of the uh, coursing club's trials rules. What are those repercussions? Um, and she said that hair coursing meetings are monitored as resources allowed by conservation rangers of the National Parks and Wildlife Service of my department. However, she goes on to say that due to a lack of resources, no monitoring whatsoever took place in 2015-2016. Uh, my colleague has mentioned uh, the abuse of uh, other uh, beautiful animals, um, uh, such as the minks and uh, all, indeed um, uh, the, the range of, of other animals. Um, and uh, of course, it has to be said that 
Um, perhaps we do need to change uh, and to look into the future and change the structure indeed of our whole agriculture, which did develop into a very uh, industrial system uh, when I was a child and we were rearing uh, pigs and cattle um, and, and sheep and, and the, the, you know, on, on a different system, uh, uh, on a much more um, uh, sustainable system. But this incredible industrialised process, uh, you know, which currently produces 33 per cent of our carbon emissions and does involve, uh, we have just mentioned the transporting of live animals, does involve considerable cruelty to our animals as something that uh, you know, we have to start moving away from. We have a wonderful land minister, we have the resources to have a, a much more sustainable type of agriculture as well and I think we should move towards that. Thanks, Thank you. Deputy Wallace.